Anthony, thank you so much. It's nice to be with me today. Thank you. Wow. All right. <laughs> the coffee hasn't kicked in really uh, uh, just yet. <laughs> Anthony, <laughs> thank you so much for your time. It's really nice to virtually meet you this morning. <laughs> nice to meet you too, Emmanuel. Uh, you have a great character in season yeah. two uh, of of the series. Can, can you tell me a little bit about Ramon? Uh, Ramon is um, Micah's assistant. He... Um... What I can tell you is that he's Micah's assistant and that he is having a tough time at the top of the show um, or top of season two. And um, yeah, I don't want to reveal too much if you haven't seen it. There's a lot happening. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, was, I was actually when I was preparing for this, I was tiptoeing how I wanted to approach it because of that <laughs> reason. I was like, well, actually, I really want people to enjoy it. And I was like, how, how, do, how do we talk about Ramon? Uh, but you know what? One thing we can do is just talk about the the background of your character because he's a product of of uh, Mackay's, you know, what she does, and 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 how he grew up. And I wanted to ask you, in some of, in some of his decisions, do do you think it's it's because of him not having much as when he was little that now what he's able to gain is he's a little bit more protective of himself? Yeah. Um... I think that his, what I can say about his past without revealing too much is that he has um, a, a bit of a sordid past and Micah's uh, organization shelter has kind of taken him in. He's become basically like a son to her in some way, shape or form. Um, and I think that a lot of the decisions are the experience of um, being used or left out in the process of what's going on. and. I think in the show, what ends up happening is that as fingers start getting pointed and start getting pointed in directions that he doesn't like, it, it starts to affect how he chooses to, to, to do his thing. Yeah. <laughs> My avoid saying, yeah. <laughs> I get it. Uh, uh, so yeah, because he has, he has an interesting line that he, he says, uh, when people are trapped, what else do you expect them to do? Which it goes really in line with what you're saying yeah. here. Oh, yeah. one of our one of our exclusive clips that we actually got for uh, for truth be told was was actually a confrontation you had with with Micah, which oh. uh, we're not going to talk about that exactly. If somebody wants to check it out, they can do that. But I want to ask, what was your experience in working with Kate Hudson? Oh, it was awesome. Um, Kate, my first day on set, uh, I didn't have anything to do. I was just like in the background for the day. And Kate had a handheld mic. It was like this interview or this uh, speech she's doing in episode one. So in between takes, she's singing and I didn't know she sang. So, and I'm a theater nerd. I'm, I'm done Broadway and a bunch of theater stuff. So it turned into like a sing fest a lot of the time. <laughs> a lot of like in between takes singing and like ain't no mountain high enough and seeing what happens. Yeah, she's wonderful and like a pleasure to work with. Awesome, you guys singing all the classics then. Yeah. <laughs> Well, let, let's go a little bit general then about the series. What do you think is the responsibility for a lot of these podcasters that are just trying to deep dive? It goes so deep into people's lives that it can affect them in a way that it, they do in Truth Be Told. Yeah, um, I think Truth Be Told is like a, a little reminder that you can really affect someone really horribly. Um, I, haven't, I don't know too much about true crime podcasts that are like popular right now. But as I'm watching more shows that are based around podcasts and seeing what happens, like you can truly mess up someone's life. And I think the biggest thing for a podcaster to know is that like you really need to know exactly what you're going to put out before it gets refuted and it's out already. And then you have to deal with the backlash of it. And I think that's what Poppy's experience is a lot of the time in this show is putting something out and then some new information comes to light. And then it's the question of how do I, how do I fix this and still keep on the task of figuring out what's going on and putting out this podcast. Um, lives are at stake, quite literally sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we, we definitely saw that in season. Well, both seasons, season, actually. Yeah, both seasons, yeah. Yeah, so um, let, let me ask you, do you think some of her motivations are led by just the popularity of, of her, just the pressures of, of, of not letting her audience down? I'm not gonna speak for Octavia or, or Poppy, um, mm -hmm. from watching it, I feel like a lot of her choices are based on her past, which is why in season two, you start to see more and more of what happened to her as a child, mm -hmm. um, that a lot of those things that happened to her have affected how she acts as an adult. And I mean, I, I just, I just caught up yesterday and 
Octavia is one of those actors that like by doing very little can give you so much and watching her in the show like I I believe that her character has this uncomfortable necessity to fix a problem based on the fact that her life was a series of fixing problems. Um, but that's also my assessment. I am not Octavia or Poppy. I have no idea what her mentality towards it is, but I just think she's pretty wonderful. <laughs> working on the working on the show, your opinion is, is very, very valid. Oh, thanks. Um, I mean, that's so, so, so many others, but let, let me ask you, Ramon, a lot of, a lot of, uh, his emotions are very internal. How did you prepare for that and try to almost do a little bit extra on screen so that it can it could convey? Sure. Um, I I love a character like this. I love having to step in someone's shoes that feels very similar but foreign from me. So a lot of my time, like each character I work on has a different thing attached to them. Sometimes it's a music thing. Sometimes it's you know, a meditation thing. But for Ramon, it was very much so like, just um, like a private meditation before going on set. It was a lot of uh, getting myself in a space where I personally could believe that what was going on was happening. Um, I'm not gonna say a method or anything, but uh, the process of working on the character and knowing the things that happened to him. And I'm not gonna reveal any of those things, but some of those things rang true. Some of those things I had to, create a version of for myself to feel authentic on set. Um, but I mean, Ramon is, that was a wonderful character to, to unearth and work on because he has so much in there that is so fun and scary. <laughs> what was one of your favorite things about Ramon's personality? Ramon was, Ramon was, Ramon is, um, is boldly defiant of anything in front of him, which was, kind of wild i you know a character like that a gay latin man um doesn't necessarily usually have power in in, in the scenarios and he's also an assistant but the way that he deals with makai the way that he deals with um uh david Lyons's character uh, inspector ames like there is he does not care and that is something i don't possess <laughs> So working on him and and running with that, the mentality that he can just very easily just cuss somebody out and keep walking was kind of very freeing and awesome. Yeah. <laughs> very nice. Anthony, thank you so much for your time. Hey, we managed not to reveal anything. That's awesome. Hey. <laughs> and now they can now they can enjoy the interview and enjoy the series. There you All go. Right. <laughs> it's nice to virtually meet you and I appreciate your time. Thanks, Emmanuel. All right, take care. Peace.